What's up guys, this is Philip Start, and welcome to the third episode of my Java Clean Code online training series. And in today's episode, we're going to be looking at the builder pattern and why it's a really, really cool pattern that you should be using in your code base. So look at this code here. Have you ever seen this before in your code base or with any code you've worked with? Well, I'm pretty sure you have. And you know, there's lots and lots of problems and challenges with code like this. So when you look at this account, this is what we call the never ending constructor parameter anti pattern. There's so many parameters getting passed in here and you do not know what they mean. Now, what is this one? You don't know. What is this 50? Is this the age of Philip or is this the street number? What is this? You, you just don't know. So it's a really horrible way of constructing objects and typically how it, how it appears is an object will have one or two parameters in its constructor and over the life cycle of that piece of software people just keep adding and adding and adding and it becomes an absolute nightmare. So this is why we like the builder pattern. The builder pattern is an object creation software design pattern used to solve this problem and many, many more, which I'll highlight and, and speak of throughout this episode. So let's go ahead and get started and start looking in the account class. Well, you'll notice in here there's lots of different variables. And what we want to do is actually split up this account class into three classes. So we want to keep the account and it's going to hold the ID, the email, but it's also going to hold another object. And that's going to be a name object, which is going to contain the first name, middle name and surname. And we're also going to contain a contact details object, which will maintain these four variables. So let's go ahead and do that. And when we're doing that, we're going to place these in a new package. And we're just going to call it builder for this example, as we're also going to have an account object. So I'm going to go ahead and create an account. And I also want to create uh, contact details. So contact details object. Or maybe it's better if we actually call that an address object. So address. And then we'll have a name object. So what we need inside the account is the ID and the email. So go inside account, pass in ID and email. And, but we also want an address. And we also want a name. So the first thing we want to do is actually start using the builder pattern to actually build up our account here. So this will definitely increase the usability and the readability of your code as you'll see as I start demoing this. So the first thing you want to do is actually create a private constructor. And this is important. And what you want to do is pass in a builder. Now this builder object does not exist yet, but it will exist in a second and it will be a static inner class of the account. And I'll talk about that in right now, actually. So what you want to do is actually go ahead and create a, a public static class. I'll call that builder. And this class is actually going to contain all the variables that you have in your account. But instead of the standard uh, Java Pojo getters and setters, we're going to not, we do, you do not provide the set in the builder. You just give it a, a, a method name that has a really good semantic meaning. So we're going to have one called um, ID, which is just going to set the ID. And the key part of this is you return the builder. So you get a, a fluent API that your client can use. So we're just going to say ID. We're going to say this.id equals ID. And then you return this. So you're returning the builder. So this means that you can chain calls together. So the next thing we want is a builder and if this doesn't make sense at all will in a second just keep watching the tutorial so you're going to assign the email so final string email and you're going to say this dot email equals email and again you return this and we're going to do that for the next two objects so this is going to be an address And we want to return the name. So 
So now what we want to do is provide the build method, which will actually build and return an account object for us. So what you want to do is say public account, and we're going to call this build, and we're going to say return new account, and we pass in this. Now if you can remember, we passed in the builder to our private account constructor. So inside this constructor, we can say this.id equals builder.id. So you can go ahead and assign all these to your variables. So this.email equals builder.email. This.address equals builder.address. This.name equals builder.name. Now, as you can see, this is going to be great because this allows us to say, okay, we actually want this account class to be immutable. And that means we can now pass it safely, uh, typically between threads or in a multi-threaded environment. And lots of these variables should not change once the object is created. And if that's your case, you definitely want to make it immutable. Always strive for immutable uh, classes whenever you can. So what you do is you mark them all as final. Of course, address and name will also need to be immutable, so they'll all need to be final variables inside them classes as well. And then if you go to source, generate getters and setters, and you generate that from all, it'll generate just the getters for them objects. So go ahead and see that. You'll see get, 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 get ID, and you won't see any setters. So you can go ahead and copy, and I'm just going to move that above the builder. And I'm going to format my code. And now that's the account builder complete. So now what we have is a clear semantic meaning for actually constructing the object and it means we can chain our methods together using the fluid uh, API. So now what we're going to do is do the same for address and name. So if we open up the account object you'll see that we also have first name, middle names and surnames. So we're going to copy these into our name class and I'm going to do pretty much exactly the same thing that I just done there. Okay, so we now have all of our objects and we have all of our builder objects. So if we go back into our actual app where we construct our objects. So let's go ahead and actually start constructing the object. So it used to look like this, but now what it's going to do is actually going to look like this. So let's say new, first of all we're going to create a new name. So new name, and we want to bring in this. And we say dot builder and then what we want to say is first name Philip next we're gonna say middle names and in here we're gonna use uh, guava so immutable list as it's taken in a list of strings so immutable list and we're gonna say off uh, we're gonna pass in middle name we're gonna say okay Peter and then we're going to say our surname is start. And then what we do is call build. And that's going to return us now a name object. So name. And of course, what we want to do then is go and create our other objects. Or what you could do is make this really nice so, so it looks pretty. So you could say, you know, you have your indentation. You could say, Philip. Philip's builder, first name is Philip's, middle name is Peter, surname is Start, and then we're going to build it. And then you can say, okay, he has an address. So address equals new address dot builder. And we're going to say, okay, we want the city of Belfast. And what we also want is, say, a house number of 111 and then what we want is zip code so we can just write one two three and then if we want anything maybe if we want to put in a street we can put in a street if we don't have a street you know you can just call build so this also stops you having to pass in 
no to your to your construction, which is pretty cool. You just leave it out. You don't need to force nulls. And then, of course, you call it build. So now we have an address object. And then when we want our account object, we say account object equals new account builder. And of course, we pass in the address, which is the address. And then what we can do is pass in the name. So we can say, okay, there's their name. And of course, we can pass in their email. We can say philip at email.com. And what was the last one? ID. So we can say, okay, you've got an ID of one dot build. So that's going to build our account object. So now what we actually have done is created an immutable account object because nothing can change here. If you go into an account, you'll see these are all final. There's no setters. And if you go into address, of course, there's no setters. Sorry, there's no, yeah, there's no setters there either. So we have an immutable class which could be easily passed through and shared between threads as we don't need to worry about the mutation of state and as you write code you write it once well typically it's going to be read about 100 or 200 times for every time you write it it could be even more thousands of times depending on the kind of system you're working on so that's why I'm all about maintainability and readability of the code so this is a really really nice way of writing really clean objects that are really uh, clean code so it really enables clean code as you know what you're writing and the person coming behind you also can really understand what you're writing and as you get good as this you don't need, need to write your objects and paste them here you know you can just indent them and slit them in depending on their size to the actual other classes so I hope you guys use this builder pattern in your code when you're constructing large complex objects it'll save you having to write lots of different setters huge constructors and all of your co-workers and fellow developers will thank you for it so make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already I hope you enjoyed this and make sure you stay tuned for part four thank you very much